Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Iceberg Recap, your home for Pittsburgh Penguins game recaps and analysis. You can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from. The Ottawa Senators take down the Pittsburgh Penguins by a final score of 2-1 to one on Tuesday night in overtime. It was a battle of two very bad teams with a few very good players. The Ottawa Senators entered that game on seven straight losses. Meanwhile, the Penguins entered losing six of their previous seven, now seven of their previous eight with this overtime loss. The pace was pretty good in this game overall. Chances on either side, a couple of really great A chances, especially for the Ottawa Senators side that Tristan Jari had to shut down to keep the Penguins in this one. But at the end of the day, it was low scoring simply because both of these teams have struggled in that category all season long, in particular, over the past month, especially when you look at the Penguins side of things, they have just been dormant, almost shut out for the third time in four games in this one, if not for a late marker by Michael Bunting, as we'll get into. Let's get into that right now with the goal recap of this one. First period goes scoreless. Second period is the same. Third period, it looks like Ottawa could have scored three or four goals in that final frame, but instead they only score one Coming from Jake Sanderson, his eighth of the season assists go to Matthew Joseph and Claude Giroux. Sanderson got the puck in the middle of the zone and just basically walked right down Main Street facing Tristan Jari and being able to beat him to make it one to nothing in favor of the Ottawa Senators. Now, they did score a goal earlier, but the Penguins video staff was at it again. They were able to get the goal reversed on goaltender interference. I'm not exactly sure if it was. Uh, it's obviously a questionable call there, but, you know, it ended up in the Penguins' favor. They ended up getting it back to 0-0 for the time being. Ottawa takes the lead on the Sanderson goal, and it looked like, I mentioned, it looked like it was going to be another shutout. The Penguins weren't getting a lot of traffic in front of Jonas Corposalo. They weren't getting a lot of opportunities directly in front of him, not a lot of rebound chances for the entire game for the Penguins. There was a lot of puck possession time. In, in the late stages of that third period for the Penguins, but there wasn't a lot of scoring chances. Finally, with the goaltender pulled, Michael Bunting scores his first goal as a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins, his 14th goal of the season. Eric Carlson gets his 36th assist, and Evgeny Malkin picks up the secondary assist for his 31st. Game tied with 20 seconds to go. Malkin had it at the point, gave it over to Carlson on the left half wall, and he shot it towards the net, or excuse me, Malkin shot it towards Carlson, who deflected it on towards the net. And Michael Bunting was able to, to hammer it home in his office, something that, you know, Penguins fans haven't really had since Patrick Hornquist, not saying that Bunting is going to have a same effect, but he does do a lot of his work in the similar areas. He is pesty, he's pesky, he gets on people's nerves, and he scores goals from in front of the net. He does so in this one, his first as a member of the Penguins, and a huge one because he gets the Penguins a point in the standings. That is their stated goal is to continue winning games. I know there's a lot of people out there that would hope that they would just lose games and get closer to getting Macklin Celebrani. But hey, for the entertainment sake of this, a tie game heading into overtime and one of the most entertaining overtimes that we have seen from the Pittsburgh Penguins in a long time. Now, of course, that automatically favors the other team because the Penguins aren't really good at playing that high-flying style of hockey, especially in the extra frame and, and ended up biting them in the butt. Drake Batherson scores, making it a 2-1 to one victory for the Ottawa Senators, Batherson's 23rd goal of the season. Assists go to Tim Stutzla, his 44th, and Jake Sanderson, who finishes with a two-point game. And that's where things stood, obviously, after overtime. 2-1 to one in favor of the Ottawa Senators. The Penguins get swept by the Senators this season, losing all three games, two of them, in extra time. But the other one was a 5-2 to two loss in home ice. And I don't know why, but the Penguins... They just can't seem to get over these young, pesky Ottawa Senators. They're, they're, they have their number. But let's move over to the three stars of the game in this one. The third star is going to be a trio of players. I'm going to give it to the Penguins' first line. Brian Rust, Sidney Crosby, and Michael Bunting. They were clearly the best line for the Penguins all night long, especially when you look at the performance of the first period. The Penguins' first line was all over the ice and all over the Ottawa Senators, creating eight scoring chances, allowing four of their own right. but playing really well in that opening frame, looking very good as a unit. The one thing that you're hoping that gets figured out is a little bit of the chemistry. Michael Bunting misses a couple passes when it comes to him passing it to Crosby, him passing it to Rust. He misses a couple opportunities because he's not expecting a pass from Sidney Crosby. It's going to take some time for him to build some chemistry, and 
get used to playing with Sidney Crosby because it is different than just jumping on a line with a regular forward, with a regular center. Crosby can make some passes that you have to be ready at any moment because he can just make a, a subtle pass that you wouldn't think he was going to make, and you have to be ready to, to fire that one home. There were a couple missed opportunities, I think, from this line where they could have had a really good opportunity, but their chemistry just wasn't there, and they couldn't connect. That's going to build over time. This was only their, what, third game? together to this point. So it's going to take some time to build a little bit, bit of chemistry for Michael Bunting and Sidney Crosby and Brian Russ. But there were some shifts where they just looked absolutely dominant on the ice. Now, again, it's the Ottawa Senators, but you got to take what you can at this point of the season if you're the Penguins. And a little bit of progress from Bunting, Crosby, and Rust goes a long way. So a nice game for that trio. Second star of the game in this one, Jonas Corposalo. A busy night when it comes to the total number of shots, 34 saves. On 35 shots, he was able to stay square, give up little in way of rebounds. But again, and I've mentioned this in the past, whenever the Penguins are coming at you from the perimeter, they're not really getting in front of you. They're not really getting in your house. Michael Bunting aside, it makes it a little bit easier. Not that being a goaltender in the NHL is ever easy, but this is one of those nights when playing the Penguins is always going to be one of those nights, at least this season where you're not going to have to face a lot of redirections. There's not going to be too many people around the kitchen whenever the rebounds are given up. So if you can have good rebound control and just stay on your angles, it's going to be a game where you could probably get your feet underneath you, get this under control and, and really take control of the game from the net mining position outward. And that's what Jonas Corposalo was able to do for the Ottawa Senators, able to shut down the Penguins. A uh, Penguins attack, like I mentioned, was not really volatile, was not really potent. But at the end of the day, he only gives up one goal. That happens late in the game. And would you know what would you know? It's from Michael Bunting in front of the net. So the Penguins need a little bit more of that. That's why I think it's good that they got Bunting in that trade. And again, I'm not saying that that makes the whole trade. But hey, you know, Michael Bunting has scored one goal. Jake Gensel and the Carolina Hurricanes got shut out last night. I'm just kidding. Obviously, you know, Gensel is the better of the two players, but a nice feather in the cap for Bunting, a nice game for Corposalo. He gets the second star in this one. First star of the game, I'm giving it to Tristan Jari. He was the best player on the ice bar none last night for either team. Saved 37 of 39 shots, including 18 saves in 20 shots in the third period on the Senators just absolutely stormed the Penguins to start the third period. First seven minutes were all spent in the Penguin zone. Great A chance after great A chance. I mentioned already that they were able to score a goal, but it was called back on goaltender interference. Tristan Jari was under fire, under attack, and his defense wasn't helping him out very much at all. He was able to keep the Penguins in the game. He was able to force the Penguins to stay in this game at least within one goal so they could tie it 22 seconds left. And... Let's be honest, he gave him a couple opportunities in overtime, too. He made a couple of nice saves until finally he's trying to take the shooter a really long cross-ice pass. He's just not able to get the whole way over, and Drake Batherson puts it in the back of the net. But a nice night again for Tristan Jari. His season has been still flying under the radar somehow. We've talked about it so often, but I don't think enough people recognize how good Tristan Jari has been this year. He's had his you know bad games. He's had his flubs. He's had his rough patches of two or three games, but the overwhelming result has been a very solid performance from Tristan Jari behind a very, very weak defense in the Pittsburgh Penguins blue line. But a solid night for Jari. He gets the first star in a losing effort. But the Penguins at the end of the day, man, they have so many issues right now. Seven losses in eight games. They continue to say that the playoffs are still within reach. I, I get it. Mathematically, you're not eliminated and you're going from being dead serious, taking everything literal, correct. They're still not eliminated from playoff contention, but the odds are very, very small, less than a 10% chance that they're able to come back and make the playoffs, especially when you consider that 10% chance is if they can turn things around and start winning hockey games. They've lost seven of, seven of their last eight and haven't looked particularly good in really any of them. So uh, it's a long hill to climb, but there are some positives to take upon, and my final thoughts is going to touch on what are those positives. Penguins get Drew O'Connor back from a concussion, and he looked good. First game back after missing a handful due to that concussion, and he had his speed. He was playing physical still. He had a lot of puck handling in this game where you looked at it and you said, all right, he's starting to put things together. Maybe he is a top six guy going forward. That's going to be a good conversation we need to have over the summer, but he had some jump in this one, created a couple chances for the second line. It was nice to see him back out there. And when you look at the Penguins top nine last night on paper, you look at it and you say, it should be half decent 
It certainly shouldn't be bottom five in the league, but that's where they are because on paper, they might be good, but in practice, they just aren't. Part of that is coaching. Part of that is performance. Part of that is effort. And uh, you mix all that together and you get what the Pittsburgh Penguins have been over the last two weeks. It's not great, but uh, welcome back to Drew O'Connor. I thought he played really well. I'm excited to see you know what he does with this opportunity over the last month of the season. He's looking to still prove something. He's somebody whose spot is not guaranteed. Now, I would assume that it's guaranteed that he's on the roster next year because he's had a really good breakout season this year for the Penguins, but he's somebody that is too young to, to rest on his laurels at this point in the, his career. So I'm excited to see what he's able to do, especially with a lot of Metropolitan Division games coming up where it gets physical, it gets testy, and part of that is going to be you know, playing right into Drew O'Connor's game. So I'm excited to see what he's able to do with that. But up next is not a Metropolitan Division opponent. It is the San Jose Sharks on Thursday night. The last time the Penguins and the Sharks played was in early November, a 10 to two victory in favor of the Penguins. And that was the last game that Riley Smith was actually a great top six player for the Penguins. Cause after that, he went on that drought where he scored two goals in 32 games and hasn't really ever bounced back. So maybe this gets Riley Smith back on track for the last quarter of the season or the last month of the season. But Penguins taking on a San Jose Sharks team that is below them in the standings. We'll see uh, another battle of bad teams with, I don't even know. There was a couple good players on the Sharks, but you know the Penguins and the Sharks, both pretty bad teams. So it'll be interesting to see how this one plays out on Thursday at PPG Paints Arena. But that's going to do it for this episode of the Iceberg Recap. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And remember, you can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from.